And this is a problem involving Bernoulli's equation. So the problem says that you have a sealed tank and it contains seawater to a height of 11 meters and it also contains air above the water and it has a gauge pressure of 3 atmospheres. Water flows out from the bottom through a small hole and the question is how fast is this water weight? Okay. To uh, solve this problem, it will always be better if we illustrate this first. So we have a sealed tank over there and the height of that sealed tank, let's put it as H. And that is 11 meters. And then it contains air above it. So that means that from that level, you have an air over here. Okay. And at that point, uh, the air has a pressure. Pressure here is given to be three atmospheres. And this is gauge, meaning this is the excess pressure above the atmospheric pressure. And then it's stated in the problem that ah, another thing that you should note from this problem is it says that um, the water flows from the bottom through a small hole. Means you have a small hole here, but the problem is it's not indicated how small is this hole here. That is why uh, that's very relevant in our discussion on how to solve this problem later. But after illustrating, we will set uh, some reference lines. I call this line as my line one or reference one. And then up into the level above, I will call that as my reference line T. Okay. The next thing that we will do is to plug in the uh, Bernoulli's equation. So the Bernoulli's equation, if you can remember, I'll put it here. BE gives B plus one half rho multiplied by the velocity plus one half. I mean, no, not one half, sorry, plus rho gh. This is the additional pressure due to height that is equal to a constant. Okay, I'm hoping this is clear and you remember this clearly. Uh, this is squared, by the way, this is squared from the previous derivation that we did. So when you have uh, this expression for the Bernoulli's equation, you will expand this one into this form. That means that Pressure 1 plus 1 half density at 1, B1 squared plus rho at 1, G height 1 is equal to the same um, expressions on the right. The only difference is on the subscript. You have B2, meaning the pressure here at the top, which is given by 3 atmosphere, plus 1 half rho 2. Uh, we have velocity at 2 squared plus uh, rho at 2 g h 2. And we need to take note that this is actually a fluid with the same density both from the bottom and from the top since it's assumed to be an incompressible ideal fluid. What that means is that your equation here means that your B1, or I mean your rho 1, is just equal to rho 2. So for um, brevity, we will set that to be equal to simply rho. Um, let's go back to the problem. The problem actually tells us that the water flows through the bottom in a small hole, and it asks us to find for how fast is this water moving. Thus, what we are actually trying to find in the problem is the velocity at 1. So this is the variable that we are trying to find the velocity at one. Um, before we go through this um, equation, you need to remember continuity equation. So I will put it here. Recall from continuity that you have A1, B1 is equal to A2, B2. So the A1 here is a cross-sectional area at one. This, this very small hole, cross-sectional area, very small hole. 
and the ATER is a cross-sectional area of the tongue portion, which is also not given. But if you will try to find for the velocity at the top, velocity at 2, meaning you will try to find for V2 here and manipulate this equation, you will have V2 is given to be A1, V1, all over A2. Now take note that um, when you try to look into the variables that expresses v, V2, you see that A1 here is very small. A1 is very, very small compared to A2. So when this quantity becomes very large, uh, you remember uh, in your mathematics that when you have a number divided by a very large number, that that var that value actually approaches to zero. So we, we, did a, we do approximation here. That is why we assume now that the velocity at 2 is equal to zero. This is very important step that you should realize this one or do this approximation. It's because it will simplify your problem. So that means that the quantity that you see here, I mean the term that you see here, this one here, since V2 is zero, this will be reduced to zero. Thus, you are working now with an easier expression for the Bernoulli's equation. So let us rewrite that. You have P1 plus one half rho. I just put rho since I have established already that the fluid is incompressible. Therefore, um, regardless of the pressure, it will have the same density. P1 squared plus uh, rho g h1 okay is equal to p2 uh, is left now since this is zero we have rho g h2 okay so how do you get h1 and h2 from my illustration it's up to me to set that uh, i set this actually to be one this line here is one this line of preference line here is two thus i will say that this is where i will set my h1 and in the same manner, this is where I will set my H2. Thus, this is where I set my H1 is equal to 0. Okay, so from that, uh, let's go back to the problem that we are actually asked to find for how fast is the water moving at the bottom, this very small hole here. And that is referring to the line, a reference line on 1. That means that I am trying to find for the velocity at 1, meaning this V1 here. So to do that, um, I will uh, transpose everything and retain this term that contains uh, V1 here. So when I do that, I will have one half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus rho G H2. And I will have uh, minus P1. And then, so I have accounted for this term. For this term, that would be minus rho g h1. Thus, I will combine like terms on the right-hand side. So combining like terms on right-hand side, I will have p2 minus p1 since, since these are pressures. And then this term here, take note that these two terms, the common term is rho and g. So I will have rho g and uh, I will have H2 minus H1. Okay, so this is simpler now to look at. But since I am looking for V1s, V1 only, I will try to multiply both sides of the equation by 2 over rho. Right? So when I do that, what happens to my equation is the 2 here will cancel out. The denominator and numerator will cancel out. And... Also, do not forget that this 2 over rho will be applied in this side of the equation. So that is actually a very nice move since I am left with V1 squared. And what happens in the right-hand side, I will have 2 over rho. And then I will multiply it by this term. P2 minus P1 plus rho G H2 minus H1. And since that is still squared, that's just simple. I will take the square root both sides of the equation. And so I am left with an expression for V1 is equal to the square root of 
2 over rho multiplied by P2 minus P1 plus rho G H2 minus H1. Now we are simply going to plug in the values of these um, variables from above. So you have 2 over rho. So let's try to look into what is the fluid in question. So we have seawater. Uh, you remember that the density of seawater is actually denser compared to water, fresh water, and that is given by, I'll put it here. I'm sorry. A density rho, I'll change color because it, it's not easy to, to see it. I'll have it green. The, uh, maybe I will put it here. The density of SW or seawater is slightly dense than fresh water. And that is approximately 1.03 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per cubic meters. So that density, that value for density is what we are going to use for every row that you see here. So 2 over 1.03 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per cubic meters. So you have that. And then P2. So let's try to look into our reference. Our P2 there is uh, 3 atmospheres. Uh, I mean, P2 minus P1, sorry. P2 minus P1, this term here, which I will put in our shade. This P2 minus P1 is actually, I'm hoping you can remember, that this is actually, since this is a difference now, this is your gauge pressure. Okay, this is your gauge pressure and that is very clearly given in the problem to be three atmospheres. Thus, your uh, P2 minus P1 is 3 atm. And you remember that 1 atm is equal to, uh, I will just put it here, maybe I will just do the, the equivalent of that later. 3 atm plus, let's just retain that uh, conversion factor. Density is 1.03 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per cubic meters. And G is 9.8 meters per second square on the earth. And uh, H2 minus H1. So we will have from our reference point that take note that H2 then is, if H1 is 0, therefore H2 is 11. So 11 meters. H2 minus H1 is just the height from the bottom to the top, and that is 11 minus 0 meters. I have hit the hair, forgot that sign. Okay, so that is how you do it. But um, this take note that this is in atmospheres, so you have to convert that into SI so that you can easily manipulate the units. Okay, so remember that in one atmosphere, you have 1, 0, 1, 3, 2, 5 um, pascals. And you know that 1 pascals is just 1 newton per square meter, since it is force per unit area. And then uh, in SI units, that pascal is kilogram. I will not show, but... Uh, I have already shown this in, in many examples. It is just kilogram meter second squared. Okay, so from the equation above, I will put it uh, below. So V1, which is the velocity of the of the seawater at the bottom. So you have 2 all over 1.03 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per cubic meters. And then you multiply that with three atmospheres. So I will have three, and I know that one atmosphere is one, zero, one, three, two, five pascals, or just pascals is just kilograms per meter second squared. And then I will have plus the density of one, zero, three times 10 to the three kilograms per cubic meters multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And then 11 minus zero is just 11 meters. And do not forget that every 
term here is actually included or is inside of your radical sign. Now, the next step that you will do is actually to plug in the values, but to check whether you are working with sensible units, um, we will try to check the units first. So disregard the values and the radical sign, and let's just plug in or check the units. So I have one all over kilograms per cubic meters. And for this term, for this first term, okay, I still have kilograms per meter second squared. For the second term here, this one, um, meters, meters. So I have met meters squared on the numerator and I have meters on the denominator, meter cubic meter on the denominator. Therefore, when I do that, um, meter squared, this two meters squared from the numerator will be canceled out by the m cube with m only the, with the only remaining unit of m then. So I will have kilograms per meter second squared. Okay, so yeah, take note of these two so you can add this since they have the same uh, unit. So I still am working with the one with the unit. So one over kilogram per cubic meter. So that means that would be cubic meters per kilogram. And then these two here, since we're just dealing with the unit, is simply kilogram per meter second squared. So what happens in our unit is we will have a kilogram. Kilogram, these are canceled units. Meter, cubic, cubic meters from the numerator will be, one of it will be canceled by meter in the denominator. So this will be M squared. So I am left with V1. And this is actually looking good because I am left with V1 is equal to M squared per second squared. And take note that I still have to take the square root of that. Therefore, my unit will be meters per second, which is what is expected for velocity. Therefore, uh, I have now an assurance that I am indeed working with the correct set of equations. So the next step then is to simply plug in the values in your calculator. I will do it on my calculator. So I will have square root of 2 all over 1.03 times 10 to the 3. And then you multiply it by 3 times uh, 101325. And then plus... You add 1.03 times 10 to the 3 times the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by 11. So your calculator gives you uh, 28.387 meters per second squared or based on our convention, we can uh, Approximate this or round off these two decimal places and since this is more than one, I mean this is a quantity greater than one, 28. So I have 28.39 meters per second. So we have solved this problem using the Bernoulli's equation. Although we do not know how small the opening is and how large is the opening above. So 28.39 meters per second, this is how fast your water is moving in the small opening in the hole below.